Good morning. In February 2013, I uploaded a video called Earth, Venus, Global Warming, and Stefan Boltzmann Law. You can see now it has over 85 views. So it's really, really popular. Um, I would say probably about five, at least five to ten of those views are mine. So really, it's probably just as well that it doesn't have so many views because I was just grasping at that idea. Since that time, I've got two comments on it. One of these was nine hours ago and the other one was one year ago. Anyway, I thought it was about time to review the topic and see if I could make it a little bit more clear. Really, probably the biggest confusion I had about the use of Stefan Boltzmann's law was related to albedo and emissivity. I read about emissivity in a textbook called Survey... Sorry. Survey Veal's college physics, and it said the value of emissivity can vary between 0 and 1 depending on the properties of the object's surface. It also says that in contrast to black bodies, an object for which emissivity equals 0 absorbs none of the energy incident on it, reflecting it all. Such a body is an ideal reflector. Knowing that albedo is directly related to emissivity, I assumed emissivity is equal to 1 minus the albedo. However, there were two fairly dramatic things I was ignoring, transparency and frequency dependence. Now, if I have an object, there are three ways that incident light might behave when it comes into contact. Number one, it can be absorbed. If the object is a solid object, the energy is stored in the mass of a material as a vibration. I think this vibration is sometimes called a phonon, but I'm not really sure. If the object is a molecule, such as N2 or O2, um, argon, which is about 1% of the, of the atmosphere, H2O, um, or carbon dioxide, H H2O or carbon dioxide, then um, the energy would cause the molecule to rotate or rotate or vibrate in and out in this case. Argon is not going to rotate or vibrate, it's going to just accelerate. I should include that rotate or vibrate or accelerate with a particular resonant frequency or resonant rotational period. For the most part, gases are transparent, means um, light can go right through them. But, but when they are not transparent, the opacity is highly frequency dependent. The frequency dependence of the spectrum of a gas is called its emission spectrum. You can see visible light spectrum of most gases by pumping a bunch of electricity through it and looking at it through something called a spectroscope. Here's an image of several emission spectra. The emission spectra of a tungsten filament, right here, hot tungsten filament, um, is, a conti is continuous in visible light. That means it is a perfect black body. No, it actually means only that it is a perf perfect black body in visible light. There could be colors of ultraviolet light or infrared light that it reflects. And there could be colors down into the radio spectrum that pass right through it. It could be transparent to colors that we can't see. On the other hand, this sodium gas is transparent to almost all of visible light, but there are particular uh, tints of yellow and blue and green, I spelled green wrong, um, which it will absorb. In the image, um, we see what happens when the gas is excited electrically and it shines in that color. When light in those particular colors hit the gas, it doesn't cause it to shine in that color. Rather, it heats the gas. That energy may just be stored as kinetic energy for a long, long time, or it may be remitted in the same or lower, or lower frequency light. So this equation E equals 1 minus A is not quite sufficient to understand the concept of greenhouse gases. Rather, we need to take into account the transparency and the absorption and dependence uh, and absorption and re emission in lower frequencies. But we can still start with um, Stefan Boltzmann's law.
power over area equals sigma t to the fourth. Um, there's a generally an e put in here. I'm going to go ahead and use Mathematicus and do some calculations. We'll put in temperature of the sun is 5778 Kelvin. Um, then, and the distance to the Earth from the sun is 149,000, 149,600,000 kilometers. So that's going to be um, 149 billion meters. The radius of the sun is 695,800 kilometers. So I'll add three more zeros for meters. And the distance to Venus from the sun is 108, whoops, 108 million 200 thousand kilometers, with three more zeros to make it meters. And Stefan Boltzmann's constant is 5.67 times 10 to the negative eighth watts per meter squared, Kelvin to the fourth, I think. Yeah. I'm not worrying too much about the units because I'm just going to do everything in. SI units. Next I can calculate the power of the Sun by taking the its surface area which is 4 pi r, 4 pi r squared times sigma t to the fourth and that comes out to be equal to 3.8 uh, no, 3.844 times 10 to the 26th, and this is in watts. can look up that number and see that that is called the luminosity of the sun, it is 3.84 times 10 to the 26th watts. And if you ask Yusef Panam Kumgit Pezi, he says that's 384 yada watts. That's a yada watts. Okay, let me talk about for a moment about a conceptual error I've made in the past. We have this body here called the Sun that is emitting 384 yotta watts of energy. Over here, just 150 gigameters away, is the Earth. Now if I apply Stefan Boltzmann's law directly, It seems like I should be able to calculate the effective temperature at Earth's surface. I will find the surface area of the sphere with a radius of 150 gigameters, and then I will solve this equation for T. So that would be, whoops, that will end up giving us the wrong temperature, but it's the power of the sun, which was the 384 yotta watts, divided by sigma, 5.67 times 10 to the negative eighth, um, divided by the area, which is 4 pi times 150 gigameters quantity squared. Well, not the whole thing, just the just that part, 4 pi, 150 gigameters squared. And then take that all to the power of 0.25, which is the fourth root. We get a temperature of 394 Kelvin. That is, if I subtract uh, 273.5, that comes out to be 121 degrees Celsius. Really, really hot. When I first did this calculation, I was under the impression for several months that our actually our atmosphere was doing an amazing job of protecting us from the sun. I even remember justifying my conclusion when I noticed that the temperature of the gases in the thermosphere were as much as 2500 degrees Celsius. Here's a graph from Wikipedia showing that above 100 kilometers from the ground, the temperature of the uh, the or the diffuse gases have an average temperature of around 1200 Kelvin. T equals 1200. These gases up here that are 1200 Kelvin though are not emitting as a black body. These molecules up here are 1200 Kelvin because of their average transverse kinetic energy. 
can see here an article in Hyperphysics um, that the temperature of a gas is directly related to, um, actually it should be 2 over the degrees of freedom of the gas um, times 1 over k times 1 half m v squared, the velocity of the gas squared, the kinetic energy of the gas. This is one area where my confusion came from before. The gas up here can hold on to a temperature of 1200 Kelvin, but it's not radiating the temperature. It's not reflecting any light, it's just up there holding energy in a kinetic form. So in this case, the formula of emissivity equals 1 minus albedo certainly doesn't hold because the emissivity is 0 and the albedo is 0. It's just a mostly transparent hot gas. Okay, so when so I made this error thinking that if I applied Stefan Boltzmann's law directly here, I should get the effective temperature at the Earth. I got a temperature much higher than expected, though, and actually I need to take extra steps to correct it. Here's what is correct. The power incident at the Earth's surface is going to be that area times sigma t to the fourth. So this is correct and this is incorrect. This is the power incident, but um, what we want to calculate is based on the power over area leaving. The area leaving is going to be four times the area incident. Why is that? Because from the Sun, the Earth looks like a cross-sectional disk with area pi r squared. From Earth, when the when that uh, power leaves the Earth, it radiates all around the sphere, and the area of that sphere is 4 pi r squared. So the intensity out is equal to 1 fourth of the intensity intensity in. So we can just repeat this calculation, except put a factor of 4 in there, the fourth root of power over 4 sigma a. And I think that should be correct. So I'll just come over here, copy this, make it, um, oh, change it to t right, and put in sigma 4 pi um, divided by 4. So, and we get, whoa, that's bad because I meant times 4. Then we get 278.6 Kelvin. So if the Sun is emitting as a perfect black body, emitting 384 yotta watts of energy, and the Earth is absorbing all of the incident energy and re-emitting it as a black body, the temperature of the Earth's surface would be 279 Kelvin, or 5.48, about 5.5 degrees Celsius. So the average global temperature now between 1961 and 1990 was about 14 degrees Celsius. So that indicates that the Earth is about 9 degrees, 9 Celsius degrees hotter than it would be if the Earth were a perfect, bo perfect black body. So I think in order to take all of the phenomena into account, we need to consider albedo, absorption, and frequency dependence. If I have light coming in on the surface of the planet, it comes into the atmosphere. If the atmosphere is transparent to that light, it will get into the planet's surface. Um, if it's not transparent, then it will be reflected off of that. Any um, light that doesn't make it into the atmosphere is reflected off the atmosphere. Is If light is reflected off the atmosphere, what does that do? Does it add heat to the system, or does all of the energy go away? I think it adds heat. Here's why. Light can impart momentum to other particles. If light comes in and is absorbed by this particle, the momentum is also transferred to the particle. However, if the light is reflected, that means the momentum exchange is even bigger. Um, the, the photon would come in this way, and it would co come out that way. The uh, momentum exchange is actually two times h nu, I forget exactly what the formula for momentum is, 
it's um, h bar k. The energy is equal to h nu, and the uh, momentum, this would be the change in momentum, would be 2 h bar k, because it was going that way with momentum h bar k, and then it's going that way with momentum h bar k. Okay, so if the light could reflect off of the atmosphere, then reflecting off the atmosphere would heat the atmosphere. But I don't think that happens. I will posit that actually in order to get reflection to happen, you need a large bunch of atoms in covalent bonds with each other. You need a solid or a liquid. You need a solid or a liquid to have sufficient surface in order to reflect the light. Gases can only be transparent or absorb a photon. But then I started thinking about it. Sometimes they are known to refract light as well. So let's just put it this way. If you see the color of the light, it was absorbed by your eyeball. Hence, it contributed heat into the Earth system. That is heat that will be converted to other forms of energy and may escape the system. When your eye emits, sees that blue light, it does not immediately re-emit the blue light. It doesn't reflect it out as if that same color. Your eye does not immediately re-emit the light it sees, but rather that energy is passed into ne neurons and eventually into heat that is re-emitted from your body as black body radiation, or transferred to your muscles as mechanical energy. Well, that's unlikely. Who knows? But let's go down to the surface of the planet, and let's say we've got a white... S oh, I can't draw white on white. Let's say I've got some black surface over here and some white surface over here. When visible light hits the black surface, it is absorbed. And when it hits the white surface, it is reflected. Now the light that hits the white surface will slightly affect the momentum of the surface, but it's all in one direction. The momentum exchange would push the Earth just a little way, a little bit away from the sun. So little that it's not really important to mention except to make a distinction because, because the light that hits the black surface is absorbed and sent off in random directions inside there and, and it contributes to the total heat energy of the planet. This energy is not immediately sent out in the same color but it will heat the surface and eventually be re-emitted in the, in the form of infrared or radio frequencies. Now this is where the greenhouse gas effect comes in. That light from the ground has a particular color, and whereas these carbon dioxide molecules up here were um, transparent to the visible light coming in, when they uh, see that infrared light um, coming out, they grab it. This gra graph represents the outgoing black body radiation of a, bo of a body, the temperature of the Earth. Actually, the, it would look something more like this if uh, you had the whole thing there. But anyway, it has its peak somewhere around 600 per oscillations per centimeter. Carbon dioxide has a particular vibrational mode which is highly sensitive to the frequency of 666 per centimeter, which if you're superstition and feel that John the Apostle was inclined toward SI units may disturb you. But the point is, the carbon dioxide both absorbs and emits light in this at this frequency. What's going on is you have all of this light from here to here, and from here to here, getting out, uh, getting through out into space. What's going on is that you have all of this light getting through um, out into space. But in this region here, you have light that is caught by the carbon dioxide, held by the gas, and then just part of it is re-emitted. This level at the bottom here represents that the cold upper surface of the carbon dioxide gas emitting light in that particular 666 per centimeter color. Now with the increasing concentration of carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide doesn't block more of this individual color, rather it widens this um, the spectrum of light that it blocks. 
so if I understand right, that little bit of light that carbon dioxide is blocking from getting back in, out into space accounts for the lion's share of the difference between that five degree black body ideal and the 14 degrees surface temp that we actually have. Well, even more than that difference, really. The 5 degrees was calculated with the assumption that the Earth absorbs all of the sunlight. In reality, the Earth has an albedo of 0 0.39, and it would be much colder still than 5 degrees, considering all the light that is reflected. But that's a calculation for another day.